Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about another Indian whiskey and up until this point I've only reviewed one other which was the Paul John Brilliance which you can check out up there. But Indian uh, viewers are actually some of my highest percentage of viewers and you'd, you'd think number two would be like Canada or something like that but no the Indians love me. <laughs> so this one's for you. So anyway this is the Emerald Fusion and uh, a couple months ago, back in around Christmas time, I had a Christmas party, as one does, and I invited a bunch of coworkers to it. And I told them, uh, like me personally, I like to host. I like to take the onus on myself to cook all the food and bring all the alcohol and just do everything myself and not have people bring stuff. <clears throat> of course, unless it's a potluck or whatever, that, that is beside the point. So in this case, I told everybody, I said, don't bring anything. But if you do, if you feel like you want to, then my wife loves Cabernet Sauvignon. So, of course, a bunch of people brought Cab Savs, which, by the way, she's very happy about. And one of my coworkers brought me a bottle of whiskey. And she, had, she is Indian, and she talked to a bunch of her friends, and they basically all suggested this one as one to bring. So I'm ecstatic because I've always heard really good things about this. I've tried it, obviously, and I have good things to say about it, but I just wanted to kind of relay that story. So as far as Amrit goes, this is a whiskey that kind of got made famous a few years ago back in 2010 when um, Jim Murray ended up naming it the third best whiskey in the world in his whiskey bible. And that is kind of a little superfluous. Obviously it's always a good thing to be mentioned by Jim Murray, the guy, uh, you know, he, he has the ability to turn whiskey into gold. But it seems a little superfluous because frankly they were the first Indian whiskey, at least by all accounts that I found. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And um, I think that just by virtue of that they were going to be famous anyway. So either way they did a fantastic job so luckily there's that. As far as Amrit's history, back in 1987 Amrit started off as Amrit Laboratories and basically they, they started making different uh, alcohols. Now their main exports are actually gin, brandy, um, vodka, sorry no rum, um, yeah and vodka. So they don't actually just do whiskey, they do everything much like a smaller distillery would except they never stopped. In fact that's actually their main export is all those other spirits but then they also do whiskey and surprisingly so they do a fantastic job at it. But as for the expressions that they offer, um, they have the regular, uh, well so they have the Emerald Fusion, Fusion. They have a single malt whiskey, a single malt cast strength, they have a peated whiskey, a peated cast strength, and then like I said they have the Fusion. So those are their core. And they do also have some other uh, just expressions but like, like most brands there's always the, the one-offs. I usually don't bother bringing them up unless I cover them on the channel. But the reason that they called it Fusion is kind of... You've heard me talk about Indian whiskey before. Usually what happens is the Indians they go over to uh, Scotland and they learned how to make whiskey. And uh, you heard me talk about the um, Nika from the barrel the, a couple weeks ago. They did the same thing. The Japanese they went over to Scotland learned how to make whiskey. So this basically did the same thing. What they do is they actually take Scottish barley and Indian barley and they blend them together and then this is what you get. So thus the fusion. Anyway enough rambling on. Let's get to the nosing and the tasting. I will say I've had a bit of this and I, I shared it uh, with the person that brought it to me as well because it's what you should do. Um, as you all know I, I'm sure I don't have to teach you guys etiquette about whiskey but either way um, just so you know I could smell this down here on the table. This has just a very rich rich nose. So let's go ahead and give this a nose. So you're getting kind of a creaminess along with uh, just very fruity. It's it's a uh, what do you want to call it? It's kind of like a heavy fruit. It's almost like a like think of the way a plum would smell, but not necessarily like a plum per se. But if you smell a plum, it's an extremely almost like a dense f nose. If you know what I'm talking about, hopefully you do. Um, describing nosing and tasting on a YouTube channel is about as hard as it seems. <laughs> so trying to relay that is tough. Anyway, so you've got that creaminess. You've got fruit. You've got a little bit of spice in there. There's actually a little hint of peat as well, which is is pretty cool. Um, I do not know if this is peated. I did not run across that and. Uh, 
Yep, actually it does say a subtle hint of peat. Perfect. <laughs> so there you go. Um, anyway, so you've got creaminess, spices, pit, peat, you've got fruit. Um, I'm trying to identify the fruit for you. I do usually write these things down ahead of time. This time I my notes are kind of betraying me here because I just wrote fruity. <laughs> so I'm going to stick with um, a very minor hint of lemon. Almost a white grape, which is odd, but I'm going to go with it. Um, and then the rest of it, I'm just going to say general fruitiness. But but definitely, I'm, I'm going to stick with the white grape the more I think about it. Yeah. All right. Let's go into the tasting. Cheers. And that is why it currently has 97 points, and according to Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. So... The taste is a little bit oak, uh, but not heavy. It's it's pleasant. It's nice. It's not like a heavy bourbon or anything like that. It's just a little oaky. Um, once again, very rich, very dense flavor. You've got a little bit of peat to it. Um, hmm. Let me give me another one. Hmm. I wasn't sure because I had recently drank coffee to try to keep myself awake <laughs> because it's almost 11 p.m but it does have a coffee taste to it and it's clear as day at least for me if you're looking to pick something out i bet that's what you'll pick um along with coffee typically you get a little chocolate note and i also get that here but the thing to know is despite how fruity the nose actually is you get a little bit of the citrus maybe on on the palate but i wouldn't describe this as very fruity I think it's light, so maybe that helps, <clears throat> but uh, that's that's kind of a dichotomy there. Is that the right word? Anyway, there, you've got a rich <laughs> and light, so whatever. Either way, all in all, this whiskey is delicious, and that's what you need to that's what you need to know. There has been very few whiskeys who, when I first tried them, have impressed me this much, and the few I could probably name on one hand. So this one is worth every bit, every single point that Jim Murray got it, and I very much suggest that you go out and buy this whiskey. Um, I think the price is roughly $65 to $70, somewhere in there, um, depending on where you buy it. So look around, maybe shop around a little bit, but get your hands on some Fusion. I think this is something that you will truly enjoy. Um, Anyway, so thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I look forward to trying some more Indian whiskeys, but as always, I, I only have a very small selection available to me, even at the very large Julio's Liquors that's right near me. But if you happen to know any Indian whiskeys that are worth my time, let me know, because I would love to do more whiskey reviews for you guys So, uh, from India. So anyway, thank you for joining me here, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.